Hello, hi, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the foundations of neurolinguistics. So I'm currently studying psychology at Trinity College Dublin and the aim of these videos is to give a short overview of different areas that I'm studying. So if you have any questions or if you'd like a copy of my notes or sources, please feel free to send me an email and I will give my email at the very last slide. Okay, so let's begin. So at the end of this video, these are things that you should know. Okay, so who Franz Gall is and be able to explain what phrenology is, who Paul Broca is and explain the Broca's area, who Carl Wernicke is and explain Wernicke's area, be able to explain localization of language, explain Broca and Wernicke's aphasias, why the model is now thought to be too simple and then explain the present model. Okay, so let's start. So Franz Gall, so between 1758 and 1628, he came up with this idea of phrenology. So he was the first person to localize, localize the brain, localize different functions. Okay, so first to accurately describe the brain, convultations, and the measure in which they differed from person to person. So he used to put his hands on people's brains and he used to feel their skulls and he decide if they were a good painter, a good person. He might even decide if they were a good suitor so that your daughter might want to marry this man. So he believed that each part of the brain was responsible for one instance of man's behavior, personality and aptitude. And of course, as time went on and Karl Popper developed the scientific method with falsifiability, um, it wasn't able to be falsified. It turned out that all the heads he was examining had nothing really in common. So it got put to the side and is now thought of as pseudoscience. But it did bring upon very important areas of research. He was the first person to localize the brain. Okay. And then from then, so 1960, Paul Broca. So he had a patient, Leborn, and his name ended up being more known as Tan because that was actually the only word he could say. So he studied cases with brain damage in Broca's area and speech production disorder. So from studying these patients, what he came up with was he thought that it was possible to localize psychological functions to brain consultations. He thought that linguistic symptoms were caused by lesions in the left hemisphere. And he thought that language thus lateralized. This is totally unexpected, but he thought that language was completely lateralized in the brain. And this is from Lee's on studies with Paul Broca, his patient Tan. Okay, so here, as you can see, this is Broca's area. So this is the part in the left hemisphere he thinks is responsible. Okay, so it's the third frontal convolution, part triangularis, pars opacularis. Okay, so, so basically an overview of that is in 1960s, Paul Broca's, his patient had damage to the cortex of left frontal lobe and he had an impairment in the ability to speak. So his understanding was unaffected, Tan's understanding was unaffected, but he had an ability to, un to speak. Okay, so Broca's aphasia. So it's resp therefore responsible for speech production. Okay, and then 1974, we have Carl Wernicke, who was another very important guy. So the posterior part of the first superior temple gyrus and adjacent areas. This is where it's, this is where the Wernicke's area is. Okay, so the language he, from the patients he looked after, the language comprehension was disturbed. So when there was aphasias to the Wernicke's area, so lesions, um, the comprehension was disturbed. They were able to speak in riddles and rhymes and keep speaking on, but nothing, it was nonsensical. So association, so aphasia and connections between areas. So Basically, an overview of that is 1874, Carl Wernicke, damage in the temporal lobe, his temporal gyrus. So the patients were still fluent, but nonsensical language, impaired comprehension. And this is with Wernicke's aphasia. So therefore, it was thought that Wernicke's area was responsible for language comprehension. And here is the Wernicke's area right there. Okay. 
Okay, so they thought that language was lateralized. So from studies, they've showed that 96% of right-handed people, language functions are predominantly lo localized in the left hemisphere. Even 70% of left-handed people also sign language. Most evidence for these effects are from brain damage aphasias, so double associations. Um, so we're able to tell a lot more about these brains nowadays with MRI and fMRI, magnetic resonance imaging and functional magnetic resonance imaging. And we can actually see what is happening and which areas of the brain is highlighted when different things are happening. Okay, so here is an example of Broca's aphasias. So as you can see here, they can say all the words, but nothing, nothing, nothing makes too much sense. So you can read here. So Cinderella poor, mm, adopted her, scrubbed floor, mm, tidy poor. Mm. Okay, and then this one here. This is an example of Wernicke's aphasias. So these are from these are from real patients. Um, so as you can see here. Um, I can't tell you what that is, but I know what it is, but I don't know where it is, but I don't know what, what's under. I know it's you couldn't say it. And you can read the rest in the slides yourself. But as you can see, everything the patient is saying makes sense. It's linear. It makes sense. But there's no comprehension of what they're talking about. Okay, so... Moving on from this, with fMRI and MRI studies, we can see that the model is too simple. It's thought to be too simple now. So now we know that language functions are not restricted to the left hemisphere. Right hemisphere and also subcortical regions are very important. So even though language is predominantly in the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere is involved with every aspect of language production, even though it's just small. So not, it's not only in the left hemisphere. So even within the left cortex, brain regions outside Wernicke's and Broca's areas are seen to be important. It's not just these two areas. So brain damage does not have clear cut effects as predicted by the model and distinction between expressive and receptive aphasias is not clear cut. Okay, so an example of this would be that Dronkers, 1996, shows damage to Wernicke's area without Wernicke's aphasias and Wernicke's aphasias without damage to Wernicke's areas. And the same goes for Baraka's area and Baraka's aphasias. Okay, so this shows that even with damage to that area, this isn't exactly what is going to happen. Okay, so then in the in the classical case of Tan, so Lebron, when the preserved brain was put in a CAT scan years later, um, it was possible to see subcortical injury to Lebron's insula also. So almost all aphasics have some anomia. Okay, so the right the right hemisphere is involved in all aspects, but this model is still the main model. Even though we've moved on, it's still the main model. It's still the one that you'll read about in textbooks. And the biggest reason for this is, is it has heuristic element. They've all done their own research. And also that there's been no second model properly done so that it can be eliminated. But the model that they're usually moving on to now, scientists are usually linguists, neurolinguists are moving on to now, is... So is the dorsal stream and the ventral stream. Okay, so the predominant Brock of Wernicke Geschwin language model is being revised in favor of models that acknowledge that language is processed within a distributed cortical and subcortical system. So with fMRI and MRI, it really brought this area to the forefront again to be looked at. Okay, so the dorsal stream core is a superior longitudinal faculus. AF, so mainly associated with the phonological processing, and the ventral stream is consisting of the inferior frontal occipital faculus and the intraoperal networks. Sorry, some of the words are very hard. And it's mainly associated with the semantic processing. Okay, so now you should know who Franz Gall is. You should be able to explain phrenology. You should know who Paul Broca is and explain Broca's area. You should be able to tell me who Carl Wernicke is and explain Wernicke's area. Able to explain localization of language. Be able to explain Broca and Wernicke's aphasias. 
why the model is now thought to be too simple and you should explain how we're moving towards the present model. Okay, so that's the end of that today. If you have any questions, please send me an email to rachel.margaret.murphy at gmail.com and I'd be happy to share my notes with you or send you over my PowerPoint slides if you think it's useful. And also you could write in the comments if there is any, any area of psychology you'd like me to cover. Okay, and if you could please like and subscribe and share also, I'd be really, really, really grateful. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.